Hello and welcome! This is Rufalmonger, my friends. Welcome to my first ever tips and tricks guide for Street Fighter 6. And in this video, we are covering Manon. So as always with these tips guides, these are big videos. So there'll be a lot of topics covered and discussed. So therefore, there will be timestamps everywhere in the video. So you can skip forward to whatever makes sense for you. We're going to talk everything from her moves or general gameplay, a lot of setups, a lot of gimmicks and everything in between. So that said, right before we get to it, let me welcome you to our sponsor for today's video, Junk Food Arcades and the Snackbox Micro. My friends, have you heard about the Snackbox Micro? It's one of the new controllers taking over the FGC by storm. It utilizes the very popular leverless layout, except in a much more compact form than you're used to. Compared to many modern fighting game controllers, the Snackbox Micro is a lot more portable and affordable. So if you're looking to upgrade from the standard console controller, be it on regular consoles or using it on PC, the Snackbox Micro is a fantastic way to do it. Fireballs, no problem. Hurricane kicks, no problem. Uppercuts, no problem. But what about the tricky stuff, the hard stuff to do? How about a spinning pile driver? No problem at all. What about one of the most dreaded motions in fighting games, the 720? Well, with the Snackbox Micro, not a problem at all. Easy as you please, thanks to the easy to use and great design. So if you're looking for a fighting game controller that is portable, affordable, fantastic with the tech and techniques, and also with a lot of extra flair because you're allowed to customize the controller with either various keycaps, art for your controller, and there's even a wide array of LED options, then the Snackbox Micro is the controller for you. So thank you very much, Snackbox, for sponsoring this video. So first, let's talk her just overall gameplay and game plan. So Manon is indeed a grappler, and she's a steamroller grappler. She's actually a grappler that gets stronger and stronger and stronger over the course of the game. She is absolutely stronger in round three than she is in round one, and that is due to the metal mechanic. So right below her health bar, you can see it goes from one to two, we'll go to three. The more grabs you land, the number will go up. And the more the number goes up, the animations start changing as well. And the damage starts going up to that point. Her level three grab is actually the single most damaging move in the game. So a level one, 2000. Level two, 2300. Level three, this is where things start picking up. 2700, then we're gonna get a cool 3000 at level four, and finally at level five, time for a pretty big jump here, 3700. So the only thing that does more than this, I should say is, it's the strongest special move in the game, is like level three supers, but uh, yeah. Say Zangief, his uh, EX pile driver, right? Still doesn't do as much damage as this. So when you hit level five, her damage just goes bonkers. And also it's not the only move that raises the metal level. So her hit grab, which has a lot of fun properties as we'll go over later in the video. Every time you land this, it'll also go up by one. And also the hit grab damage also goes up just like the throw damage. Now, since you're gonna use this in combos mostly, it will scale. So in the end, you're not gonna do like the wild damage that say you're gonna get off the base throw, but still the damage will go up. That means basic BNB combo structure will do more damage over the course of a long game as well. So that's great. It can be a little harder to combo into them sometimes, like off your heavies, it's easy enough, sure. But if you're going for lights, you probably have to burn some dry bar or something like that to raise the metal level, but it's definitely in your best interest to do so. So that's the basics of that. But what makes her different than say Zangief? Why would you pick her over Zangief? The thing is, uh, especially in the context of Street Fighter, she is not a normal grappler. Normally the humble grappler, they walk their way in, usually something like this, that's all they can do, right? Probably a lot of super armor to bully through stuff, all that kind of stuff, right? And eventually they land that grab. Okay, there we go. We're finally online, right? Mano actually is exceptionally proficient right here. She doesn't have to, or potentially doesn't even want to run her way in. Not to say she won't ever like try to scam her way in with dry rushes, because you absolutely will, absolutely. But uh, the thing that's different about her than like every other Street Fighter grappler is if she wins an exchange in neutral, like a poke, unlike many other grapplers, that's her way in. 
So if Zangief hits you with Stand Heavy Punch, he hit you with Stand Heavy Punch. That's it. That's all, right? If Manon hits you with Stand Heavy Punch, it's grab time. No Zangief hits you with Stand Medium Punch. That's it. That's all. If Manon hits you with Stand Medium Punch, it's grab time. Because she has multiple moves that vacuum you in. And that's the big difference. So when you're doing that footsies back and forth, classic Street Fighter, right? Every time you get your button off, you win an exchange. Well, geez Louise, it's party time. And that is definitely not how other grapplers work. So at that point, you land the vacuum and then, you know, guess strike, guess grab. Basically, that's how it goes. So being able to get her grab game going without having to work her way directly beside you is definitely a giant benefit to the character. Also, toss in the fact as we'll go over later in the video, uh, very easy overhead low game, uh, exceptionally so, I would say. Uh, one of the most generous anti-fireball packages in the game with all of her spin moves. She has a very uh, expansive tool set. So the old muscly armored grappler, she is absolutely not. She's a very new take on a grappler. And don't get me wrong, when the train leaves the station, uh, it's even scarier than Zangief, because she's a lot faster than Zangief is, right? And once you start leveling up, the fact that she does more damage than Zangief on the grab is a terrifying concept. So that said, now that's the general basics of the character. Let's get into a lot of the specifics. So now let's take a look at her special moves. Very important. First up here, is the command grab that is manage door. So it is half circle back, one of your punch buttons. Now the thing about this, obviously, as we mentioned at the beginning, this levels your metal system. This is tied to your metal system. So every time you land one of these grabs, you will raise your metal level. And every time your metal level is raised, your grabs do more and more damage to the point where you hit level five and things just get outright ridiculous. Once again, this is the single most damaging special move in the game. Even Zangief cannot come close with his spinning pile driver. This is the big dog. So this grab is very important. Now the thing to note is a little different than some other command grabs. So the damage is fixed. Outside of the metal level changing your damage, obviously, the heavy, medium, and light version, and EX versions as well, all do the exact same damage. What's different is the frame startup and distance travel. So the heavy version is the fastest at five frame startup, but also goes, well, the least amount of distance. Conversely, the light has the most distance traveled, but it is 10 frames of startup. And the medium version, well, is somewhere in the middle, basically. It is uh, eight frames of startup. And the EX version basically has the range of the light grab, roughly around here, but the startup of the medium grab. So we can hit from a little bit further out but you have a little bit faster stuff than just the base light. So they all do the same damage regardless. So generally speaking, a lot of times light's going to be the heavy duty one for you. It doesn't do a lot of the work just simply because it has the range. And if you want to go for the gimmicks and all that kind of stuff, it's the gimmick one because it has the range and it being slower actually plays into its own personal benefit as uh, many moves. If you go for say the heavy version right away, it'll whiff due to them being a hit stun or block stun or whatever. However, since the light version is just a smidge slower, it actually works out. That'll give him enough time recovered to actually get grabbed. And the difference between eight and five frames in real life, that's imperceptible, right? Either they are already gonna get out or they're already gonna get grabbed. So it's pretty all right, all in all. Once again, this move is the reason you're clicking this character. Like if you don't care about this move, find someone else. This move is the character, 100%. And this is why people are scared of Manon. Next up here, we have her wheel kick, her axe kick. I call this the genocide cutter myself, but this is rond point. So this is quarter circle forward and one of your kicks, and it's just a big old cutter kick. Basically like Rugal himself from King of Fighters, except she doesn't quite hit the air. So this is the workhorse move. This combos from all your lights. This combos from literally everything. This is your combo fodder. Uh, this is your combo extensions. This is your everything. So one thing to note about the base move is they all have different startups, although don't worry, even the slow one will combo from lights. Uh, the one thing to note is they have different knockdown times specifically. Medium is the best for damage. Heavy is actually the worst for damage, but heavy has the best knockdown, 37 frames. And medium has, you know, well, not 37 frames. And we'll go into specifics because the knockdown time really does matter. Now, uh, once again here, so just basic combo filler for the most part, except for the knockdown stuff we'll talk later about. The EX version is just an easy juggle, easy combo follow-up, really that simple. 
also easily goes into itself. And this is how you get some of her more advanced combos if you're willing to spend some of that meter, right? So you don't want to do it raw. It's very unsafe on block. She doesn't really have safe specials for the most part, except for one. So you just do this. You get your hair confirmed, see your combo. You go for the combo. Easy as that. Next up is Degage. And Degage is three actual moves, and I'm just going to call them by the three actual moves. One's a low, one's an overhead, and the other one's just a big old swan lake kick. So these are all quarter circle back and the various kicks. Quarter circle back low, or rather quarter circle back leg kick, is the low. And what a low it is. Hits from about this far away, which is effectively half screen. I think it's uh, very fair to say, if not even a little bit further. And it starts up in 16 frames, which means you are not reacting to this. You hit the button and either they were always going to get hit or they are always going to block. Like either they were already blocking or they weren't. As simple as that. So if you're doing the old back and forth and buzz all that, you can snipe their toes very easily with this move. And uh, for the damage, it's going cool. Thousand, roughly 10% on most characters. So that's really good. Now, conversely, if that's the low, the heavy kick, that's the overhead. This is a true overhead. It has to be blocked standing. If you are crouching, you will be hit. So right there, low, overhead, mixes right itself, right? Now, this one's a little slower, 20 frames, but 20 frames is still on the edge of human reaction. It is possible to react to this, yes, unlike, say, the low, but... It's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. And the beauty of this move specifically is it's safe on block. Like maybe not safe on block, literally point blank. Nine frames here will get you punished. But at the range you want to use it at, given it's incredibly generous range, negative nine at this far away might as well be zero. It doesn't actually matter. It really doesn't. So at most of the ranges you're going to use this at, you are effectively actually safe on block. Meaning not only is this a solid overhead tool. It is also just a solid poke. A 20 frame poke from that far away is actually very useful. Like say your other big uh, pokes here, like your stand heavy kick, it hits from further away than that does for one. And it's only just a little bit slower. So yeah, a move that's a true overhead save on block long range, it's a pretty sweet deal. And the medium kick version is your combo fodder. Really as simple as that. Hits from lights, although it has to be stand light punch by the way. If it's crouch light punch, it will not be a combo. It has to be standing light punch to get it off lights. Just FYI. Off things like, say, punish counters. Easy follow up, right? Uh, so it's good for combos. Also, the knockdown is exceptionally good. And it's going to get its own section later in the video. So if you are in the corner or nearing the corner, I highly suggest you end with this move over, say, other moves. But yeah, so for one move, you get a sick low with one button press, a sick overhead with a heavy button press and a sick combo ender with a medium button press. This is a good workhorse. Our next move is Renverse, and that is effectively the spin. So that's what we're gonna call it, the spin. So spin is another really modular move. It does multiple things, just like some of our other moves here. So on its face level, you spin into attack. And this is your hit grab, and this levels up your metal mechanic. So you definitely wanna do this a bunch. You want to end most of your combos with this if applicable. Not always going to be applicable, but if applicable, please do it because leveling up the metal level means you're going to end games a lot quicker with the grab, right? So that's good. That's good. That's good. So we have the base version. You can also hold the move to be a little bit of a fake out. So say we special cancel into it and hold the button. We fake out and maybe we catch people with a gimmicky throw, right? It's not solid play. But you're not playing a grappler for solid play, right? Let's get all the way real. I'm a grappler player all my life. I, I, I know how this works. But yeah, so we can also fake out, hold the button, and spin. And just so you know, all versions have some manner of projectile invincibility. Those are the funny yellowy white frames that you see on the frame meter. That is your ability to simply just go through fireballs. So the hit version has the most. The spin has less. But the idea is when the fireball comes through, we just spin through it, right? And also, if you hit kick instead, you get a spin kick. And spin kick is also extra good at bare minimum. Easy combo opportunity mid-screen. Good gotcha game plan, has a strong punish counter. And yeah, so all three versions, the hit grab, you'll use in combos, and maybe as a hard call out. Spin just to go through fireballs and gain forward momentum. And the kick both as something else to go through fireballs. And also another exceptionally long range poke, because once again here, we talked about it, stand heavy kick, good range. 
her overhead better range, and her spin kick even better range yet. So she has a lot of good options. So now let's talk the supers. First, her level one super, that's Corsica forward, double Corsica forward and kick. And there's two things to note. One, this startup is Strike Invincible. That's the funny white and pink frames you're seeing on the frame meter here. So if you just try to attack her through this, she will blow through it and hit you. And two, considering the relative range of the attack and the relative startup of the attack, this is an amazing whiff punish button. If you see them whiff anything, not a fireball, because you'll get hit by the fireball, but if you see them miss a move or whatever, and you're not in range to say poke them with stand heavy kick or uh, stand medium kick or whatever, this is a good gotcha. However, even from near full screen, you better believe that's a punish counter, because that's how fast and how far this move travels. So good as a get off me reversal, yes, but also uh, considering uh, its range and speed, a pretty solid whiff punish move as well. Her level two super, this is double course to go back and kick, is the big fancy Swan Lake kicks here, Swan Lake Ender. And this is full true invincibility. Unlike the level one, which is only invincibility against strikes, this is invincible against throws, this is invincible against fireballs, this is invincible against everything. So if you want the catch all wake up, this is it. And she doesn't really have much in the way of defensive options. So you probably will want to use this as wake up every now and then. Also, this is a combo monkey move. Uh, it combos off any EX very easily, as you can see here, right? And it juggles off basically everything in the corner. Like, like whatever you want to go for, it will for the most part work as long as your juggle meter, your juggle points aren't just completely used up. And it adds a pretty spicy chunk of damage at the end, right? Because it is a level two super. The least it can do is 40%. So it's also a solid combo ender if you either don't have the level three available or you do have the level three available, but you want to burn two bars and then leave one bar open for the defensive option of level one. And finally, the big dumb level three super. Everyone's got one. This is your big combo monkey super. You're going to want to attach it to the end of a lot of combos. So a couple things to note. Just like, well, every level three in the game, if you happen to be lower health, near death, you can see here the bar, your life is now in yellow, the move will change. The animation itself will change near the end, and you will also actually do more overall damage. So the move just gets better when you're near death. That's just how it works, right? That's great. It's the closest thing Street Fighter Six has to a comeback mechanic, I suppose. Uh, but the thing is, when you want to use it in combos, it can be a little tricky sometimes. Like some of uh, your basic hit confirms, right? Not gonna work. Uh, we try the medium kick version, not gonna work. The only cutter kick that it works with is only the heavy kick and only the first hit of heavy kick. So if you're looking to get this off a basic hit confirm, then uh, really keep that in mind because your ability to get the uh, level three is actually quite limited. And off of aerial juggles, it's actually also very finicky like weirdly so. So what you want to do is your hit grab, but don't let the full animation play out. Just the initial hit and then cancel that into the level three. That'll be generally speaking the most overall efficient way to get a level three in a juggle combo. So she's not as able to freeform her level three as some of the other characters can, but still just keep it in mind. Keep your options open and options available, right? And the opportunity will always present itself. So once again, generally speaking, if you want to use it in a combo instead of just like a raw reversal, because it is full invincible, you want to do either your heavy axe kick, cancel on the first hit off grounded foe, or if you're juggling, go for your hit grab and cancel the initial hit into it. Now let's talk notable normals. So Street Fighter, no, there's a lot of normal attacks, right? That's kind of where... Uh, separated from other games. So normals is the name of the game for a lot of characters of Street Fighter. And Mano has some pretty good normals. First, let's start with the showstopper because this is maybe her most important button in the end, even if it's not technically the best, stand heavy punch. So stand heavy punch is pretty good range for what it is. 10 frame startup, that's also respectable, especially considering how game changing it is if it connects because the second hit vacuums you in. And it vacuums you in at plus three frames. So that means if you mash anything at all, you will lose to her hits. And also, if you mash anything at all, you'll lose to heavy grab. You'll just lose. You can't hit buttons. What you have to do is block or jump. Simple as that. If you jump, you will beat the grab. And if you block, then at least your toes won't get sniped by the low hit confirm, right? 
So this leads to a immaculately amazing situation. So you want to be poking with this as much as possible. And thankfully, the hit confirm is wildly generous. So say we set here our basic training and the block. We're sending it to random, right? We're going to hit confirm this bad boy. And the window to hit confirm this is actually insanely generous. You have a very long time. Don't feel pressed to have to hit the button right away because you actually have a long time to be able to hit the button. Uh, my button presses are probably carrying through the microphone here, but uh, you have a long time to actually hit confirm. It's very reasonable to single button hit confirm this. A lot of times, a lot of moves, it's not. So uh, just keep that in mind. Like stand medium punch is single hit confirmable too, but it is uh, quite a bit more difficult. I would not say it is as generous. Your time is a lot more pressed with that one, that vacuum effect. So of the two vacuum effects, so of the two vacuum effects, this is certainly the one to go to as the hit confirm window is just very generous. 10 frame startup, also very fast. Good poke button for what it is already. Barely negative on block, just a good tool to abuse. Now, thankfully she has tons of good normals besides that. That's not the only one, right? Uh, a lot of her ability to control range from this far away has to do with specials either the low, the overhead, or her spin kick, right? So that just there to supplement the game plan because you want to control with normals here, control with specials here. But the ability to control with normals, like let's say stand medium kick. Also 10 frame startup, so just as fast as this guy here, but it has many other uses besides just that. So for one, as like a whiff punish tool, it's just a little bit better in my opinion. I think the hitbox is just a little bit more suited to it especially for like characters that go for like a lot of crouch medium kicks and stuff and their hitbox is generally a bit lower. It will connect in places that stand heavy punch will not sometimes. So just keep that in mind. Also, uh, this is matchup specific, but one very important thing. There's a lot of characters that have armor besides the usual you know, drive impact mechanic. Like say Marissa, good example, right? Uh, and if you hit stand heavy punch for the most part, you're gonna like, just get bopped, right? But the thing about this, unlike drive impact, is a lot of these characters like Zangief and Marissa, their move doesn't have lower body armor. Now this move is not a low, by the way. You can block this standing, but this is the fact that it hits lower and Marissa doesn't have armor lower. It's only upper body. So against a character like this, this is a go-to poke, perhaps overstand heavy punch, because you know you won't get just caught out in the open with random armor. Zangief, same deal, stand heavy punch, you get bopped. However, stand medium kick, you bop them. There's no armor on his toes. Just to mention it quick, cause we'll talk about it later again. Sure, jump medium punch forces an air juggle state, which means you can indeed combo after the fact. So that's handy. Her jumping buttons aren't otherwise notable. Like they're very workmanlike, right? Like uh, say like jump medium kicks or cross up, all that kind of stuff. You know, hit the enemy on the other side and go for whatever combo. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the standouts for jumps. Now another standout purely just for combos cause in neutral it's not that amazing is back heavy punch, because it's the only button that naturally lets you combo into her spin, which raises your metal level. So this is a move, like you're gonna wanna scam it with combos. Like it's worth it to spin that drive meter to be able to combo into it so you can get the metal level. And uh, it also has some interesting wake up applications as it'll get its own section later in the video. But yeah, just as a combo workhorse bare minimum, because it combos into spins, back heavy punch, very, very important. Okay, so now here's a big one. You landed the grab. That, this is the reason you picked the character, right? You landed the grab. Now what? Because the grab puts you, well, pretty far away. This isn't some Street Fighter V uh, Oki situation where like, you landed the big grab, you're still directly on top of them, now you force the mix. That's just not how she goes here. So what do we do? Now that we landed the grab, other than be happy that our metal level is going up and eventually we'll land the holy grail of grab damage. So one thing in the note here, I got the frame data on for a reason. Every grab, doesn't matter if it's a level one, two, three, four, five, every grab, you're always plus 19. So you wake up 19 frames before they do, can do whatever inputs you want to do 19 frames before they do. Now, 19 frames from this far away isn't a lot necessarily but there's still some stuff you can do. So say from the exact distance it puts us at, you know what will connect here with the relative and appropriate amount of speed needed for overhead. It's 20 frames, so there's a frame differential, sure. But basically after the grab, the overhead is guaranteed to connect. 
They can absolutely block, yes, but one, you're completely safe. It'll just reset the distance. Negative nine from this far away truly does not matter. Like if you were plus nine from this far away, it still wouldn't matter. So negative nine definitely doesn't matter. So that's just a good check. Okay. Are you going to be good and know your place and just block for a second? Because if they try to do something, attack, whatever, like crouch for whatever reason, jump for whatever reason, or after the fact, you will get them doing anything other than just holding back. So this is a good like building block after the throw to just establish the situation. Let them know what's up. Now, once you've let them know what's up, okay, you better hold back after the fact. After a grab, one of the fun things is because you're plus 19, if you do a tiny delay, you're in range for the low. So now if you make them stand block, you can start sniping in their toes. Now, since the move is plus 19, the Low, quarter circle back, light kick is 16 frames, two active frames. That means if you do it frame one, you will actually miss. So all you really need to do is just simply like the tiniest delay, then go for it, right? So you can go for the overhead right away. If you want to go for the low, just, just wait just a microsecond. And then from the command grab, you raise your metal level. That's great. All that kind of stuff. You can now enforce a little bit of a high low mix, right? That's great. That's pressure. That's more real, especially because once again, unless they like perfect parry, or immediately wake up drive impact, uh, the overhead, it's completely safe to do. There's like very little consequence for going for it. Now, where we raise the gimmick levels a little bit is we can drive rush after the fact. Now our drive rush is not good, but it will put you out in range to say, throw out your thing and go for the light grab, the long range one, and try to sneak in another grab. Now this is by no means guaranteed, just FYI. But if you're going for the gimmicks, this is a good gimmick. So say they're aware of this possibility, right? What are they gonna do? They can smoke you out, just jump, land on your head full combo, right? But there is one other option from this that will deal with that. So you throw them, dash forward, and go for that heavy punch. Once again, we talked about how heavy punch is one of your workhorse moves. And you can vacuum it in. Uh, if they try to jump, this will hit them before they hit the air. And it's also completely safe on block at the range you're doing it. Like, it's good, right? So you can force a little bit of the gimmick game. Am I gonna try to grab, which is jumpable? Or am I gonna go for the stand heavy punch off it and get you and then throw you into the blender, right? So it's not a hyper complex pressure game after the wake up. Sure, it isn't, it really isn't, right? But you have some basic tools and it's for the most part all in your favor. Even if it's sometimes just a basic check, you have stuff to work with after your throw. Now, in this section, we're just going to talk anti-airs because she maybe has the best suite and options of anti-airs to stop jumpers of any character that just doesn't have a traditional air invincible dragon punch. Because she's got a lot. So let's go through it. One, the most basic. Crouch, heavy punch, heavy punch. This is a target combo. So it's two hits. The second hit just slams you down to the ground directly in front of her. It's incredibly generous timing. You can be sloppy with it and do it a little too early. You can be sloppy with it and do it a little too late. It doesn't really matter. As long as they don't already hit you, you'll probably get it off. Your timing can be pretty varied and it will work. So it's good damage for what it is. It's very easy to use. It's basically just a sledgehammer option. Really, really good. Now, jump medium punch. We talked earlier about it. Jump medium punch causes an air to air juggle and it lets you like get fancy combos off. So if you hard call them out on a jump every single time, depends on how much meter you want to spend or what option you want to go for, you can get extra damage. And for the most part, you can almost always raise your metal level as well. So that's really good. So next quarter circle forward kick, that is our cutter move. Now, unlike a dragon punch, this is not frame one invincible or anything, right? This just simply has a good hitbox, and maybe just slightly some anti-air invincibility later in the frames, but definitely not the first frame, which is the most important, right? However, still, if you can hard call them out, especially on the heavy kick version, you can get a little bit of a combo follow up after. That's good, more damage, a lot of damage, over 2000 damage for an anti-air, exceptional. Also, the EX version. Now this one's much more forgiving as an anti-air. Uh, once again, not frame one, like a true uppercut, but the uh, anti-air frames are both much more generous than the regular versions and start earlier. And also, Let's you combo into the hit grab, which means lets you raise your metal level. So just a solid option all around. You can combo into whatever you want to. It doesn't have to be the hit grab, right? But uh, it's just a very strong tool all and all. 
Also, it's a very strong gotcha move in terms of spending meter. If you're looking to get like a level two to get more damage in, or uh, once again here, if you want to go for hit grab into level three, a jump can mean death. So the ability defensively is not frame one like a Shoryuken, but Shoryuken's, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of time to hit confirm into a level three, right? You got to go into it right away or not. This lets you assess the situation. So it's really good. And no, we're not done. We're not close to it. Let's start with a back medium kick. So this is meant to be like a target combo into an overhead, right? So it's like weird and gimmicky, but it turns out it's also an exceptional, exceptional anti-air. And also that follow-up we talked about there, that overhead, you can keep going into it. In fact, in fact, in fact, if you delay, you can combo into it. So don't just hit the button right away, delay the move. And that move, by the way, is special cancelable. So you can go into your spin grab, raise your meta level, and you don't have to spend meter like you do on the EX Cutter, right? Now, unlike the EX Cutter, right, it doesn't have that partial invincibility, so it's easier to get beat, I guess, as you can see here. But for the most part, it's just really, really good. And we got one more for you, and it's a weird one. It's a weird one. So she has a command normal, down forward, and heavy kick, this guy here. And down forward, heavy kick, Totally works as an anti-air. So it doesn't quite low profile the same way you think it is, like what a slide would be, but it does beat jumps very easily. So this is one of your best options, if not your best option for very far jumps, as it'll give you the distance to close the gap, right? Versus like, you know, some of the other moves. And it also forces a side switch on hit every time, which is one of the weird benefits of the move. It could lead to some gimmicks as well. But yeah, so if you're looking to deal with a far jump versus say a deeper jump, the down forward, Heavy kick slide is definitely the one for it. So yeah, no sure you can, but anti-air options are absolutely on the table. Our next section is about our good friend, the drive rush, because you need the drive rush. Simple as that. No, a lot of characters, it's a universal mechanic. You certainly want to use it, but Manon needs it. Why? Well, uh, let's say she wasn't blessed with the best frame. So if we go on block, you'll find that literally every single move she has is negative on block. She does not have a single move that's plus on block, which is wild. Like plus on block moves are, are rare in Street Fighter 6. They absolutely are, but pretty much everyone has at least like a move that's plus. She does not. She needs to use the drive rush just to get a plus frame, right? And of course, she has that grab, y'all, right? So we need that plus frame to enforce some of the mix. So. Something as basic as literally this close, DR jab is actually worth its weight in gold because that lets us enforce strike mix. So immediately go for the grab because it's plus three on block. Or say we can do this, okay. Then you know go for lows because it's plus three on block. So if they try to jump out or hit back or whatever, we'll beat them. So we need something this basic just to do the mix up that Zangief could do normally. This is one of the you know, trades of the character stuff. She has a lot of strength, Zangief doesn't, but Zangief could just walk forward and headbutt or even hit stand light punch, and then you're immediately in the blender. She cannot do that. Also for pokes, for combos, basic hit confirms, once again, we've mentioned it several times, but it's important. If you want a light uh, hit confirm and you want to get a metal off it, spinning drive rush is the only way. Uh, it also helps her counter poke game as well. If you're just back force in neutral, just like say hit medium kick and just buffer forward forward like this. And if it doesn't connect, well, it doesn't connect. That's not the end of the world, right? But if you're doing that old Street Fighter back and forth, right? Then it's worth its weight in gold because she needs you to be close. And at bare minimum with this specific example, she can always enforce the vacuum, right? Even at absolute maximum range, she can hit you, DR in, crouch medium punch, and then she'll always be in range for stand medium punch which has the vortex attached to it, stand medium punch, stand a medium kick. So that always works. And say for a little bit uh, closer, DR into crouch medium punch, always has enough plus frames to combo into back heavy punch, which means natural combo. We also raise our metal level, right? So either at worst case scenario, we'll get the vortex in and we'll force the guessing game on you, or we can just go right whole hog and gain that metal level out of the gate. So a lot of characters want to do stuff like this. This is not a rare concept, but Mano 
perhaps more than average, really needs that drive rush just to get the party started. Now, just to talk a little bit of neutral talk here. So her walk speed is good, very good. And, and you're gonna find that in Street Fighter 6. Most walk speeds are actually just kind of better than they were in Street Fighter 5 across the board. So that's good. Her range on her buttons and her ability to control neutral is great. Up close, obviously, we got our various lights, which are good. And they all lead to, you know, fun little hit confirms. So that's great. A little further out, she can check with a lot of her buttons here, stand medium punch. Even if you don't uh, have the ability to hit confirm on the hit, it's hard, right? It's still there, it's seven frame startup, so it's just a good check, if anything, especially given its relative range for its relative speed. Stand heavy punch as well, which we already talked about, is an amazing party starter, because if you get it off, that, that could be the game right there, right? Because, you know, either we're gonna get a quick hit from, or we're gonna get a quick grab in, something's gonna happen if you're lucky enough to land it. So, her range from roughly this far away is also good. And further out, stand heavy kick is really good. Uh, it's also an exceptional whiff punish button. And we talked about that. Like, she's not necessarily deficient in that category, but just sometimes the range isn't going to work, right? But stand heavy kick? No, bro. That range is going to work. So stand medium kick from that far away, forget it. But stand heavy kick can do it. So as a whiff punish button, yeah, it can do it. Also, swan leg kicks, right? Free combo. You know, uh, 2200 damage for a poke exchange in neutral. I'd say that's well worth it. And if you watched all the video up to this point, remember that level one talk, we talked about how far and how fast it goes. Well, boom, that's a natural combo as well. And that's 3000 damage for just a poke exchange in neutral. So stand heavy kick has got the gas is what I'm trying to say. Another really good thing to note for Menno in her neutral is EX Spin. So EX Spin, it has the projectile invincibility, sure, but actually has regular invincibility, not the way you'd want it. It's upper body only, but that helps a lot. So against a low, you're gonna lose, but against just about anything else, you're gonna win. Uh, upper body invincibility is basically everything wasting up. So against characters who have just like outright better buttons than you, like DJ is a very big threat with all of his big buttons. If you know he's gonna stick out a button, you can safely spin right through that bad boy, punish him and get a medal. This also works against moves you might not think. Like say the Blanca Ball, very powerful move, right? Very safe too as well. Except if you catch it coming, you can spin right through that. It's invincible mid body and that's where that connects. So therefore you see it, just go for the spin right away. Don't try to play around it because it's hard to play around. You see it? Just take your best option, take your best shot out of the gate. E Honda, much the same way. There's a lot of ways to deal with headbutts. Sometimes they're not great, but as it hits mid body, you'll spin right through it, punish him, raise your metal level. It's probably the safest and overall best bet. So it's not full everywhere invincibility, but against a lot of moves you'd actually want to use it against. It's really all you need. So this is a great tool in neutral as well. And of course, a little further out, she can hit, threaten you with overhead. She can threaten you with lows. Uh, she can threaten you with spin kick. Uh, it has a lot of range. Also very safe on block at the range you want to use it at, just like the overhead. And this is what leads to part of her game plan because against fireball users, as we talked, her anti-fireball game is generous to say the least, right? So against fireballs, if you just want to spin your way in, that's very low risk, right? That's great. If you want to go high risk, you can go for the raw spin, which is not safe on block, and just go right through the fireball, get a metal level. Or if you want to split the difference here, you go for spin kick. Sometimes you'll whiff, right? It all depends on the ranges. Sometimes you'll hit. And if you hit on just about everyone but Guile, because Guile does recover quite a bit faster, it's going to be a punish counter, and she gets a lot off the punish counter. Got to be a little on the ball, sure, right? But... 2300 damage and a raised metal level, once again, off a of poke and neutral, well worth it. So she basically engages really well from this far out to about this far out. These are her main ranges. Up close, her quick buttons are not gonna be as good as other quick buttons. Like she's not beating Cammy, but from roughly here to roughly here, she excels. And of course, so, well, this close is also really good if you can get the grab off. Okay, let's talk pressure on wake up Okazeme, if you will because she's got some pretty decent options and they're off the basic hit confirms, which is excellent. So the cutter kicks, we talked about them earlier, good hit confirm combos, all that, right? The heavy cutter specifically has the most amount of frame advantage, does the least amount of damage, but that's part of the reason. So say we hit 
and we dash right after the fact, right? We're plus 16. And even if the enemy back rolls, right? Which they should, mid-screen. Okay, we're plus 16 from this far away, which means very easily we can just, like, walk forward, hit a button. So right there, we just walked forward and we just challenged with back heavy punch, right? It's not complex or anything, but it definitely works. Like, say in our example here, we're going to have Ryu wake up with Jeff. And we're going to be able to clobber it. Like, it's a non-issue. All you have to do is heavy cutter, dash forward, micro walk, and hit a button. And you'll beat anything they have to do, right? Simple as that. And I'm using back heavy punch because, you know, it's an exceptional button and all that. But it can be whatever you want, like... Couch medium punch, even easier, honestly, right? And if it hits as a counter hit, also goes into stand medium punch, which, well then, and that means if you're putting two and two together here, leads into your uh, target combo vacuum, leads to them getting pulled in, you advance frames, hopefully you get a grab off, right? And once again here, he set the wake up jab, fastest possible move he has. And well, wouldn't you know it, we can grab him out of it, right? The timing for that admittedly is a little strict. I'm not gonna lie to you, right? But that's an option. So that's as about easy okey as you're gonna get. This is anywhere on screen. Literally just like confirm, heavy kick cutter, dash after the fact, tiny little walk, hit a button, go for a grab, whatever. You're gonna beat anything they're gonna do. So it behooves you then. Maybe it's not the most damage. Sure, but it's some of the best pressure you're gonna get. So mid screen, that's really good to go for. But she has better stuff in the corner. Quarter circle back medium kick, this is the Swan Lake kicks, is 33 frames of advantage, which is fantastic. But the problem is, even if we dash forward like the last one, right? If they back roll, we can't do too much about it, right? They just simply gain too much space on us, unlike, say, the previous setup. So it doesn't matter much unless we're in the corner. And if we're in the corner, that's where this starts mattering a lot. So if we dash right away, we're at 12 frames of advantage. Back heavy punch. Huh, it's got a lot of active frames. See those like kind of ready pinky frames? That's how long it's out there for. So it won't hit on frame one, it'll hit later in the frame. Say, you know, it's plus three. If it hits later in the frames, if we do this, what is it gonna wind up being? Oh, that says plus eight, doesn't it? Cause we dash forward and since we still had so much more advantage. The move only hit later into the move because they were not up off the ground yet, right? So that's fantastic. And eight frames of advantage. Well, wait, hang on, hang on a second. Isn't this move eight frames? Well then. Yes, it's actually natural combos into itself. They didn't have to press a button. This is no counter hit situation or anything like that. It's literally combos into itself because the first hit hits later in the active frames and the second hit will combo into that. So it's really fun and interesting. And yes, naturally, you can go into a spin grab or whatever, but also because you're starting with two fierce attacks, that means the damage is going to be heavily front loaded. So you can go for some absurd combos as well. So, maybe not like an every game combo or something, but actually surprisingly practical enough. Her ability to stack damage in the corner, uh, thanks to EX Cutter after EX Cutter, just gives her so much juggle potential. You don't really have to think about it, right? So, if you got the meter to burn, hey, why not? So, very strong setup. And of course, I guess I shouldn't have to mention it, but I gotta mention it. This whole setup here of just doing this, the bad boy here, and you know, the dash after, right? You're plus 12, so if you just want to do a very, very, very slight delay, you can go for the grab, right? <laughs> just go for the light grab. Just wait a split second, go for the light grab. The frames will take care of the rest. So once they're worried about blocking, you know, multiple back heavy punches, you can go for that grab. And also one last thing, say they do block. Since it hits so late into the active frames, it's actually also plus on block. Normally, this move is not plus on block, right? But in this case, it will be plus on block. It's normally negative three. This time, it'll be plus two. So if they block the first one, rest assured, it's still your turn. If you hit a button first, you're gonna win. So all in all, I think this is a very powerful setup. It's very simple. Just end whatever combo with the Swan Lake kicks in the corner, dash forward, 
and the numbers will work in your favor. And finally, let's just talk some gimmicks, because everyone loves some gimmicks, right? Not stuff you want to do every game, but if they don't know it, you should punish them for. Uh, say off some combo structure off spin kick, right? So you get whatever spin kick, it could be the EX version, it could be raw with a punch counter, however you get it. And with the combo structure, you want to go for something like that. Now, normally what you would probably want to do in a situation is something like this, just to gain a metal level, right? And it's also respectable enough damage. But we can use our pal, the slide. So remember how we talked about earlier in the video, slide resets positioning? Well, about that. It forces a reset right here. And we can be a little bit advantage as well. So if you really want to gimmick them out, like no one's going to understand this setup the first time they see it. So after that reset, just immediately go for like grab for the, like the range and all that. Just, just grab them. People aren't going to be expecting to be air reset, like land on their feet instead of landing on their back because this will always air reset them if it hits them in the air. So it's a free opportunity to gimmick a grab in. So take it while you got it. Also, yes, Manon is all about the command grabs, but she does have a throw loop. And it's uh, easy as easy gets for the most part. Just throw them in the corner, walk forward a split second, then throw them again. Uh, that's all there is to it, really. So to get out of this, they either got a you know, tech a throw, which will reset you back to here because throw tech distance is very long in this game. Or, you know, backdash it or whatever, right? But it's just very easy. She can just throw you over and over and over. And this is a good, pardon my French, as it were. Uh, this is a really good scrub killer tactic because uh, they can't mash out of it as long as your timing is decent. There's no button they can press other than to tech, backdash, or otherwise get out of the way. So if you're just looking to scam out a win, and you know, if say your metal levels aren't quite high enough for the big damage grabs, that's a way to do it. So that's a little bit of a look at Manon. So Manon has a lot of interesting tricks and she's a very interesting grappler. Once again, not the normal kind of grappler you see in a fighting game, much more neutral focus grappler, which I think is fantastic. And as a new character in Street Fighter, well, I think she's fantastic too. She looks cool, she has a cool personality and everything about her is, well, nifty. So that said, I hope this video has helped you learn about the character from the basics to more advanced concepts and all points in between. I hope I helped you out in some way, some form. So, you know, if you're in the comments, hey, you know, leave a like, that always helps. It helps a lot actually, so please do it. Uh, let me know what you enjoyed about the guide. I'll got any questions, I'll try to answer them if it's feasible, but otherwise, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Street Fighter.